I'm Adrian Schneer, Advancement Coach and Strategist, Lawyer and Professor, and you're listening to the Advancement Spot Podcast, the podcast all about academic and professional skills, strategy, and mindset to help you make big moves to achieve a life beyond your wildest dreams. If you're looking to accomplish more and take your next steps with supportive and experience-informed strategies, look no further. Let's get started. Hi, and welcome to the Advancement Spot Podcast. I'm your host, Adrian Schneer, and I am so grateful that you've taken time out of your busy day to spend some here with me. Today, we're going to talk about something that comes up with every single client whom I have the absolute honor of working with. Failure. The fear of failure. Now, this isn't an easy topic or feeling to talk about because it makes us uncomfortable, right? Thinking about failure, what if we fail, can send us into a downward spiral and fast. But what if I told you that failure was actually a productive part of your journey? What if I told you that you could use failure to your advantage? What if I told you that I actually think the concept of failure is BS? Excuse my French. Stick with me. We think of failure as something to be ashamed of. That if we fail at something, we're disappointing those around us. We're embarrassing those who care most for us and support us. We're embarrassing ourselves. We think of failure as this clearly defined phenomenon, like some kind of figurative end of the road, meaning that if we fail, we're done. It's all over. We can't recover. But like I said, I think the concept of failure is total BS. And I don't say that lightly. If you look at me, the life that I've built and continue to build, you might think that I haven't, quote, failed. But what if I told you that it's the failure that I've faced that has gotten me here? that has forced me to be resilient, fiercely standing in my principles and actually grow. Because that's the truth. I have failed. I have felt crushed by failure, the fear of failure, even before actually failing. And those times that I did actually quote fail, what did that look like for me and what happened after? I'll tell you. Before I really started to understand the benefits of failure, I was really ashamed when I felt that I had failed. Whether it was poor grades in my first year of university in a program that wasn't for me, or if there was some kind of failure, as I would have described it in my personal life, I felt ashamed, disappointed, like I was letting down anyone who supported me. I felt so much pressure to succeed. More on what success means in another episode. But I felt so much pressure to succeed that I focused not on failing, But I felt so much pressure to succeed that I focused on not failing rather than focusing on what really mattered, growth. And I'll tell you, there have been failures for me and there will be more. I'll give you an example that you might be able to relate to. Actually, I think the situation that I'm about to tell you about is probably the time in my life when I felt the biggest sense of failure. And after hearing what this is, I think you're going to understand why I think that this failure was the most important failure I have ever had and why I'm actually thankful for it. You've already heard in episode two that my first year in university was tough. I dealt with chem lab sabotage, classes of 2,000 to 3,000 people, a steep grading curve, and a big learning curve for how to study and take university exams and assignments, and getting poor grades in some of the courses that I thought I needed to get into medical school, which... I thought was my only option at the time. I was taking the chems, the bio, the psych, the physics, the calculus, among others. The course load was heavy and I was doing much better and enjoying my writing classes more than my science-based classes. I clearly excelled at writing and critical analysis, but I couldn't see the forest for the trees. I was determined to go to medical school. So who cares about the writing and critical analysis classes? I thought that the only thing that mattered was science courses. So I persisted. I persisted through the classes, tutorials, exams, labs, because I was so afraid of failure. My fear of failure totally masked and overshadowed any foresight I could have had related to my failure and what it could be. Enter my five-year vision exercise when I work with clients. This is what I was sorely missing in my early journey. 
I got to the point that I was struggling in calculus and physics, so much so that I dropped them in the first semester of first year and re-enrolled in them in second semester. Suffice it to say, my schedule was a bit of a mess. In second semester, even though I had already learned the content, I struggled again. I couldn't figure out why everyone else seemed to be getting it and I wasn't able to. I was exhausted. I went to every single class and tutorial. And to this day, I have never skipped a class or tutorial. I went to office hours. I even hired tutors. I was memorizing, but not understanding. Something wasn't clicking. I hated just about everything of my first year. And I felt like a total failure. So much so that I couldn't even talk to anybody about it. I felt like I was failing for the people around me. I felt like I was a bad role model for the people around me. I felt like I was disappointing the people around me. I was disappointing myself. I had been the valedictorian at my high school graduation the year before. So what would everyone think of me if they knew that I was having so much trouble? Everyone had been so impressed that I was in this world-renowned life science program and everyone saw so much hope, except me. So what was wrong with me? I had felt like a total and complete failure. I had no idea what I was going to do. I decided that I had to drop calculus again for the second time and probably physics too. I was so ashamed and I was trying so hard. I had no idea what to do. So with my tail between my legs, I went to my grandfather, who was my absolute number one everything. My role model, my sounding board, my truest ally, my biggest supporter, my best friend. My grandparents lived three blocks away from me growing up. And for this, I feel like the luckiest person in the world. I am who I am because of them, even though they're not here anymore. My grandparents were both physicians and I so respected and respect their lives, experience and work ethic. My grandfather immigrated to Toronto from London, England after he was a medical officer in the Korean War based in Malaysia. He proudly recalled that he had a so-called pet monkey in the jungle in which he was stationed and he was the first to transfuse blood using bamboo to save injured soldiers. And as a physician in Toronto, he held incredible positions his entire career. From president of the Ontario Medical Association to chief of staff at Scarborough General Hospital at the time to running an incredibly successful medical office with my grandmother at which they had patients, some of whom were with them for upwards of 50 years. Now, if that's not a testament to who they were as people, I don't know what is. My grandmother attended medical school at a time when there was a quota on the number of women who were admitted to medical school. She was raised on a small farm in rural Saskatchewan, and her parents were immigrants too. And her ticket out was a scholarship that she was awarded for receiving the highest grades in her year across Canada. This allowed her to attend McGill from her small town upbringing in Saskatchewan to become a successful physician, and they both together built a full life. So how could I tell them that I again had to drop calculus and physics? I felt unworthy. I felt stupid, to be frank. I felt like a failure. I walked over anyway. We lived so close together, and we sat down. I told them that I was having so much trouble that I needed to drop these courses, I was in tears. Almost like I was asking their permission. And don't get me wrong, I had a whole plan. I was going to take ecological math instead of calculus, which would still have qualified me to apply to medical schools. And they said, sure, okay, if that's what's right for you, in the most supportive way possible. I didn't understand then, but I understand now that what they were saying was that I had to figure out what was right for me, not for anybody else. So anyway, I took the ecological math. I finished it. I didn't love it, but I didn't hate it either. I dropped physics altogether. Chemistry, that's another story. But let's just say that I didn't take chemistry again, ever. But somehow I did study for the MCAT and I actually did all right. Somehow I felt less pressure studying for the MCAT later on than I did studying in my first year. Probably because by that point, I loved what I was studying and I had had a total mindset shift but I digress. And then, as you know, from episode two, I ended up switching to health and society at York right before my second year started with a plan to switch back into biology. And of course, that never happened. And the rest is history, but also it's available in episode two. 
You see, what I perceived as failure for so long was actually what I needed to catapult me in the right direction. I pushed so hard to stay suffering because it's what I thought I had to do. Rather than listening to the whispers that were hinting at me that my path was different and certainly nonlinear. Looking at me today, or even back then, you would never have guessed that all of this was going on for the better part of a year. And if anyone in my family hears this episode, they're sure going to be shocked that I'm speaking about this publicly. But here's the thing. I'm not ashamed anymore. I was for a long time, but I'm not ashamed anymore. And I'm not going to lie, it's that I've done a lot of hard work on my self-esteem, my self-worth, and value to get to this place where I can actually share this in hopes that you can relate in some way and so that you won't feel so alone and so ashamed and you'll start to feel hopeful rather than ashamed in the face of failure. And I have to say that while my grandfather was still here, While I was finishing my master's, he was so excited and proud to finally talk with me about the healthcare system and health politics and the pharmaceutical industry and fraud. And it turned out that he knew my master's and PhD supervisor from his days with the Ontario Medical Association. It just seemed like everything happened for a reason. And we all, my grandfather, my supervisor, my family, we all found ourselves sitting around the celebratory dinner table at my parents' house after my master's thesis defense. And I really felt like this path was where I was meant to be. There are always signs, whether you believe in them or not, that help you to figure out whether you're in the right place or not. And if you're open to them, they'll guide you. They've sure guided me. Sometimes they just look like coincidences but there's no such thing as a coincidence, like sitting around the celebratory dinner table, celebrating my master's thesis defense with my grandfather and my supervisor who knew each other back in the 80s. Everything happens for a reason. I was meant to be there in that moment and I would never have gotten there if it weren't for that first year and switching to a program that was more suited to me and my skills and what I enjoyed. So what I thought was a failure was actually the best thing that ever happened to me because it has allowed me to build this life thoughtfully, meaningfully, presently. It has allowed me to gain insight into myself and others. And it's what has allowed me to help you. So what have I learned about failure? Many things. First, I'm not afraid of it anymore. Second, failure isn't real. It's a concept that we use as a framework to define outcomes, but it's not the truth. So what if we reframe it? Reframe failure as a guide or indicator that challenges us to reflect and think about what is happening and maybe change course like I had to, or maybe stay the course if that's what you choose, but the failure forces us to reflect. Third, fear of failure cannot hold us back. Fear is a feeling that we talked about last week. And this is really important to identify as we feel it. Fear of failure can be paralyzing, but even worse is letting that fear infiltrate our decision making. I hear all the time from clients that they're not applying somewhere because they're afraid they won't get in. Well, okay, but what's the worst that can happen? Actually, the worst that can happen is that you don't even try. You don't even give yourself the shot. The second worst thing that can happen is that what you want doesn't happen whether it's gaining admission to a program or something else. But then what happens? It's not all just over. You wake up the next day and life goes on. You're resilient, thoughtful, mindful. And you try again using another system or strategy. You grow. You let the failure help you figure out what works and what doesn't. And you course correct. You use it as information, as knowledge. Failure becomes a tool for you, just as it has for me. I'm not afraid of failure anymore because I know that if I, quote, fail at something, I will be one step closer to succeeding because I'll have information on what didn't work and I'll be able to make more informed decisions going forward. Failures are lessons that should be used as tools. We have to be comfortable with failure. People who succeed have failed not once, not twice, but countless times, as I have. Successful people fail more than they succeed. 
So what's the difference? Successful people use failure as knowledge to drive them forward rather than feel ashamed and quit. It would have been so easy for me to quit and go get another job and just start working. But I knew that that wasn't the end of my road. I knew that that choice would not have been aligned with me. And I knew, I knew that I just wanted to see what else was out there, what was going to happen for me, what kind of life would I have, and what kind of life could I build. Successful people fail and move forward and grow through failure and out of failure. And failures can be big or small. Regardless, they teach us, they guide us, and we are always learning. So next time you make a decision that causes you to settle, Rather than take that chance on yourself, invest in yourself, remember, we need failure to grow, to thrive. It's when we don't try, when we don't get back up, that we truly fail, because that is when we stay stuck and we settle. And that's not me, and it's certainly not you. Thanks for being here with me today, and see you next time. Thanks for listening to the Advancement Spot podcast. If you heard something today that helped you get one step closer to achieving the amazing life you want, and you'd like to learn more about working with me, I'd love to hop on a call with you to see how we can help you. So follow me on Instagram at applyyourselfglobal and send me an email at hello at applyyourselfglobal.com. I'd love to hear from you. Remember to subscribe so you never miss an episode leave this episode a review and share this episode with somebody you think needs a boost of inspiration and actionable tools to help them succeed. Thanks for joining me and see you next week.